and bam. Fits like a glove, looks good. Just side by side, it just looks so much cooler. Perfectly. I'm so excited to actually just like whip this thing and if, be yeah. careful always, but <laughs> right, What's going on everybody? Rat Wrenches is back for another video. Today we have the Audi S3. We're gonna be doing a um, You know a semi-decent install. It's gonna be brake upgrade for the front and rear I got some nice rotors down here with some carbon fiber ceramics I'll get into why I chose these for you know the reasons that I did, but um, it's going to be a pretty much a brake job. And I know a lot of people you know take these to the dealers because they have that electronic parking brake where you can't service it. Um, otherwise, you'll damage the motor. So I'll show you a couple ways to get around that. Otherwise, you'll have to take the car to the dealer if you don't have a specific tool or or you know follow these steps. But uh, without further ado, let's just get right into it. We'll move our way down here. We got some drilled and slotted rotors. These are from Power Stop. And this was a full brake kit for front and rear, and I'll link that down below. It's pretty affordable. It's, you know, it's, I personally like the drilled and slotted look. It just helps with the heat dissipation, so on and so forth. But um, I did end up choosing carbon fiber ceramic brake pads. This is a personal preference. I personally recommend it because if you drive these cars and you have the OEM brake setup, you come over here. Look at all that brake dust. It covers my wheels. Like right now my wheels are very dull. They don't look shiny at all. And this is from that OEM spec. I don't know what the material is inside of it, but it does kick up a lot of dust. So, you know, I went with the carbon ceramic. You know, after I wash this car one day, it's just covered. So, went with them. This should work for an Audi A3, S3, Golf R, and GTI. The only thing that's different is the sizing of brakes. So definitely call um, your local dealer, either your Volkswagen or Audi. Both will be able to look it up but determine what size rotors you have because there is different sizes. These were 310s and then I think they make 314s or whatever it is, don't quote me on that. So you gotta make sure you get the right size because those little millimeters do make a difference. You'll have clearance issues, so make sure you specify that, just call your local dealer. But for the price, you know, a couple, a couple hundred bucks, it'll save you a lot of money compared to going to the dealer. And before we go into anything, I wanna point out a disclaimer. If you do do the rear brake pads, just the rears, the fronts, you don't have to worry about this, but if you do the rears, um, they do come with an electronic parking brake, most of these. Sometimes the A3s don't and the GTIs don't, but most of the time they come with an electronic parking brake and you will have to disable that before removing them because if you try and twist in that caliper and you didn't disengage the electronic parking brake, it will blow that motor and you'll have a bunch of warning lights and your e-brake will not work properly. So there are a couple ways which we'll get into to remove that. So just keep that in mind. Make sure if you do the rears that you have the proper tools to disengage that because it's not just by flipping it and, and putting it down like in there. There's a whole motor that has to retract. So we'll get into that a little bit. But now let's make our way over to the tools that you'll need. So first things first, there are a bunch of sockets. Um, we have a bunch in here. I don't know exactly off the top of my head. I don't remember what size they are. But once we get under the car, I'll let you know so you can put that in and then we'll link everything down below. Um, but one thing you will need are triple squares. This one I got from AutoZone, but I'll link them on Amazon if you want to do that or if you want to go to car parts. But you will need a triple square for the rear calipers and I think the fronts too. Also, we got this from Harbor Freight. This is pretty much your piston retractor kit because you know once your brakes are under pressure and everything, they push in. So you have to push that caliper back. I won't get into too much technical terms. I don't want to confuse you guys. But yeah, and then we got some, you know, ratchets, some brake grease, some gloves, um, pretty much all you're gonna need, and then some sockets. Um, yeah, and if you have wheel locks on your car, you'll have to remove them. But like I was saying with the rear parking brake, you are gonna need some kind of scan tool to disengage that. You're gonna have to hook this up to your OBD2, which we'll show you in a little bit. There's this. I highly, highly suggest this if you're like a novice mechanic and you're, you know, you you need to check your code and stuff like that. This is pricey, I'll link it down below, but it is the best bang for your buck. I think it's like 700 bucks. Also, there's a thing called OBD-11. It's about 80 to 100 bucks. You plug it into your car and you control it on your phone, you could disengage that parking brake. Or, I don't suggest this, there is a, a little ghetto way. You could take off the motor, put two, like a battery, and then you put two wire leads off it and you connect the pins to the rear motor and it will disengage it. It's a cheap hack and I don't suggest it because some things can go wrong. 
So now that we got it pretty much syncing with the computer, we're gonna operate the, uh, pretty much just gonna follow the prompts and do what it says. All right, so now we gotta make sure that the e-brake isn't on, sometimes it is when you park. Gives you three options to choose from. You could either open the count, or pretty much the motor, or you could um, end it and close them. So right now what we're gonna do is start the brake pad change. So in this case, we're gonna have to retract the piston, so we're gonna press one, and you're gonna hear the motor kind of make a, you know, electronic noise to releasing it. So make sure you hear that, otherwise they are, are not retract right there and you'll get a bunch of warnings all right so this tells me that the brakes are fully open so now i could just put this aside leave it in here turn off the car but you see all these warning lights come on so you got to make sure those are displaying because if you push that caliper back in the piston you'll have those errors on all the time because you mess up the motor so make sure you do this right either do it through the alto scanner OBD 11 or there's a bunch of YouTube videos. I'm not going to recommend it, but there are YouTube videos on how to manually retract them using batteries and wires. I did not say to do that, but if you want to do it, do it. Now we're going to pop open the hood, take the uh, brake reservoir cap up, take that off so when we do all four brakes, it doesn't blow out that, uh, you know, that seal. All right, so first things first, now that we got everything out of the way, it's time to actually start taking the tires off. Um, in this case, we have there's different setups where there's not even this whole ring. Sometimes there's wheel locks, but that's all based on you. Just kind of take those things out. There's 17 millimeters. We're going to do a passenger side on camera since we've got the most room here and we'll get the lights and everything set up. But um, now just get the car up in the air, use the jack stands. We'll take the tires off and start diving into it. Got the wheel off we're gonna start with the front um, what you're gonna want to do is this caliper mounting bolt right here is a 13 and then on the back side it is a 17 wrench so you're just gonna put that on there and stop it from spinning I don't have a short one so I'm gonna use a deep one unfortunately we bought the, the wrong uh, shorts but I'm gonna break that loose Hold that there I will get the bottom one before we start taking it off, so we have leverage to pry against. Okay. Break that loose. We got a ratcheting wrench here. And we'll just ratchet that thing off and get it to the side. Just a little guy. And you're gonna have to reuse these, so try not to round them off. Unless you get new ones, of course, but no need to. The caliper should be free. You can take a pry bar, kind of just wedge it out of the way. And you want to be careful where you hang it because you don't want to put too much pressure on this brake line. It could eventually snap. And then you got a whole nother problem on your hand. So the best thing to do is kind of find a spot to mount it or just kind of tuck it like that. But here I'll show you why I replaced in these brakes. Yeah, this is probably about like, in technical terms, it's probably about a two millimeter, not even. So those would be replaced, recommended to be replaced, and same with the inner. Sometimes they're different sizes, measurements based on wear. This one has a wear sensor. Just gotta kinda get this out. It's a little clip that just mounted right here. Right there, and it's just a little tab. But I'm gonna try and wiggle her out without breaking it. So we got the old one out. This is the sensor, kinda just clips in. Um, it's getting to the point where it's probably going to trigger the light because it's just got contact points. So once that reaches the rotor, it will trigger the light in the system and say, you know, brake issue, service now, see the closest dealer, yada, yada, yada. So, all right, so now we just have to get the mounting bracket off. I believe those should be 21 millimeters. Let me double check. And they are indeed 21 millimeters. There's one if you want to come over here, Wes. There's one right here. And then one down. I can't see. They got it right there. And those are going to be on 
usually pretty torqued, especially if you know you haven't touched them in a while, they could be a little rusty. So just be mindful of that, they're gonna be rough to take off. So use your leverage, get some long tools, breaker bars, whatever you need, but it's indeed a 21 millimeter socket. And we'll break that loose. All right, so we got these broken loose. They were a little bit of a challenge because they have definitely not been done since you know the car was put together from factory. So it's always a little bit more tough. But now that we're getting this off, we'll take that out of the way. And then there's a set screw here, which just holds the rotor in place. And that is a T30. You can even use a T27. It's a Torx bit. We'll get that out. Be careful on these because they do round so easily. You don't want to have to drill it out. So just be careful. Don't strip them. And these are the 21 millimeter bolts that I was just taking out. And they just go to this and then the uh, spindle there. So just set that out of the way. We'll clean that up once we're ready to go. But now I got my T30. Just gotta kind of spin that thing out. This is a little set screw. Now this should almost be welded to the hub. Like it's just made such a crazy seal. So you just kind of hit that off. Before you do this, make sure everything matches up because once you hit these, there's a groove in them and it's gonna create a pulsation. So just, you know, make sure you order the right ones. Cause like I said, there are different sizes, 310 and 312 and I think 314, I don't remember exactly. But I know mine are right, so I'm gonna hit this off and it'll fall right off. I love this part. Your plugs on? <laughs> I'm not gonna hit that hard, right? All right. And now out with the old, we'll clean up the hub and just try and clean up as nice as we can. We'll put some grease here so we don't have, when we go to change these new ones, we don't have that seal like that where I have to hit it like that, but let's do it. Since these are drilled and slotted, they are directional, so they're nice enough to label it for you. This is the front passenger side. We're gonna take our little Torx bit here, hammer her back in, that way we don't have to hold the rotor in place, and bam. Fits like a glove, looks good. I'll clean up that little excess right there, but damn. Just side by side, it just looks so much cooler. It's gonna breathe a lot better too. Yeah, and then once I have nice rims too, you'll be able to see this a lot more. It's just gonna make it a lot more sportier, which I'm really excited about. And of course, with our next mod that we have just waiting to be installed, it's just gonna complete the whole aesthetic appeal but um yeah so now in here i personally don't like using non-oem you know grommets and stuff so i reuse the oem grommets i'm just going to lube these slides up that's just my personal preference i think nothing beats oem of course i'm going aftermarket brakes but i like the yeah, i contradict myself right there but it is what it is i don't like using the not OEM parts. Some stuff OEM is, you know, a must, other stuff yeah. you can get away with. Now that way you don't have a sticking caliper, just make sure they move freely. And we'll install that. It's pretty much the reverse procedure. We're gonna take those 21s, bolt it up, we'll get the new pads, put the caliper on, retract the caliper, and this side's done and we'll go to the back. All right, back to work. So now the last step, we've got everything greased up. The last step is to just reset this um, caliper piston. So we got our handy dandy brake caliper reset tool. We're gonna take one of these bad boys and we're gonna twist her home. And it's a good thing we have the uh, brake reservoir open because now we're gonna be pushing fluid because this is pressed out with fluid. Now we, when we twist it in, that brake fluid's gonna go back up into that reservoir. And it might overflow a little bit, which is fine, don't worry about it, just make sure you clean it up. But if, say, you don't take that cap off, and you don't have to take it off when you're just doing fronts or rears, but since we're doing all four, it's really gonna be pushed under pressure, and if you break out that master cylinder seal, you're gonna have issues. So just take 
tripping over my tools here, but take some extra precaution. It takes two seconds to just unbutton that. This little S3 cap is kind of in the way of my twisting, because this usually sits right in there and it will twist at home, but I don't know if it's gonna work with that. We're gonna have to use a different style. Right now, this usually would work on most cars. It's gonna work for the rears, but since the S3 is like a performance kind of package, they got this little plate here that just, you know, emphasizes that it's an S3. It's kind of in the way, but I'm making do with it. I'll put a picture up on the screen of what you can use as an alternative that will just make it go that much smoother. But yeah, this is a generic one that will work for most cars. We're making do with what we got. Now that the piston is receded flush, it's time to put this caliper on. Make sure you put the right orientation. No kinks in that brake line. And we'll just slide it right over. Line those two holes up. Okay, obviously it's gonna be loose because there's no pressure. And we'll just put one of these in there. And then we'll do the bottom one. We'll tighten those home. Put the wheel on and go to the rear. Simple, easy one, two, three. You know, save yourself some money. Do it at home, get the right tools, and you won't have any issues. So they're snug, we'll torque those once it's on the ground and it's like 86 foot pounds, but now let's go right to the rear. Take those off, just keep on powering through. For the driver front, it's the same procedure, minus that um, brake wear sensor. The front driver does not have that, so we'll make our way to the back. All right, so for the rears, there's gonna be a lot more specialty tools than your average sockets. But to cover up those um, caliper mounting bolts, there's little caps. You take a little flathead or a pry bar, just kind of push it out of the way. And then inside there, there's an Allen key, which kind of threads in right to there, as you can see. We'll get to that in a little bit, but we're just gonna get everything out of the way. So we'll get those two caps. And then, of course, there's like a little retaining clip here. Kind of just take a pry bar. It isn't spring loaded, so just be a little careful. You know, you don't want to fling it at someone. So just kind of keep your hand on it and she'll pop right out. They do give you new ones of those. I'm gonna inspect this and see if I can reuse it, just clean it up. But now let's take those Allen keys and we'll just get that caliper out of the way and then we'll start moving to the, um, to the bracket. But as you can see here, this big thing on the back of the rotor is that electronic park and brake um, motor right here. So that's the thing that if you're, you know, like where we are front, where we are pushing the piston back in, if we did not reset that, we're pretty much forcing the thing, the spline in the middle back, which causes that issue because it, you know, it's mechanical and that's supposed to be electronic. So make sure that is fully retracted and then we'll just start going. So we got the caliper bracket off. Um, these were the triple squares I was talking about. You'll have to get those, they're linked down below. These are good when you're fooling with, you know, Volkswagens, Audis, Mercedes, BMWs, they all use those non-American style um, bolts. We did have to jack it up a little bit just because of the leverage I needed. I had to get, you know, swing it, it was hitting the ground. So you probably saw my face looking pretty stupid, but we had to uh, lift it up. Now we're gonna get that little set screw out and then hit the rotor off. See if I get it. Perfect, this rotor was already loose. So, not worried about that. There, that looks like it's still pretty good. It's always good to inspect, because if you have one pad that's lower than the other, you could have a hung up caliper. But no, these are pretty even. As you can see, this one has a little retaining clip in a way. That is gonna be on the back side, and it's gonna sit like that. So also with these, don't put too much tension on those. You got a lot more wires on this because you got the motor. But yeah, we're gonna clean this up and put the new one on.
just like that. The rears are done, set screws in, got the retaining clip in. She moves, put the wheel on, and that's it. That's all you need to do for these. I'm gonna break clean this up. You don't want any you know, interference on the rotors, anything to interfere with the stopping. But uh, yeah, the front's easy. The rear's a little more, you know, not hard, but there is a little more things you have to fool with to take into consideration. But now we're gonna do the driver's side all off camera. So pretty much the same exact procedure. And to put them on, reverse procedure. And once we get them all on, we'll reset the caliper and you'll see us in a sec. So we just finished the driver's side and everything bolted up perfectly. No hiccups, nothing broke. So that was pretty much like I said earlier, same as that side. So now what you wanna do is, you know, since you push the calipers, the pistons in, you could have some brake fluid, you know, coming out of the reservoir, so clean it up there. I didn't have any, I already checked the level. So check the level, put the cap back on. We can close this, pump up the brake to get some pressure in it and push those pistons to touch the brake pad and create like a clamping force. And then we'll just have to reset that parking brake. So let me just pump up the... So once you feel your pedal get firm, um, you know, that they're touching. Of course, once you turn the car on as well, you'll probably have to re-pump them. But now let's turn on the e-brake so we won't have any issues or any sensors. Or... All right, so now that we technically end it, the brake pad changer, so we're gonna close the brakes. In this case, it's just the, uh, you know, the electronic parking brakes. So we'll press two. You'll hear that motor once it goes. The future, man, it's crazy. But yep, yeah, now that's closed. So let's just check off the fluid level. We already did that top off if you need to. So make sure you get the specific one. I don't remember what it is. But now we're gonna turn it on. Just pump up the brake. Because you know, I've seen this where people, techs in the industry, they don't do this sometimes. And then when they go to backup, they have no pressure and they just keep going. But I'll just kind of, Back up, test it. They grip so much different. I guarantee it's just because I almost whacked me in the face. I know, I, I was careful, but um, that's pretty much going to conclude the um, install portion. Unfortunately, it's dark out and it's pouring, but um, we're going to pretty much, I guess, tomorrow get at it and see how it is on the road test and really put them up to the performance. And you know, if they're really worth the extra money compared to OEM and We'll do that, so we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. All right, what's going on, everybody? It's the next day. It stopped raining, finally. There's still a little bit of dampness on the ground, but it shouldn't interfere with this video. Um, pretty much, we're gonna put these brakes to the test. I really want to do a side-by-side -side comparison with like the OEM specs and then compared to these, but the OEM ones that I had obviously were worn, so they wouldn't give a true, you know, complete stop test. But pretty much what we're gonna do is just pretty much like do a review on it. See, we're gonna come to like a complete stop for maybe 60, 70 miles an hour or something like that and um, see how it handles. But from honestly just driving a little bit, it's more of a crisp stop. Um, it bites a lot better. But these are really good for performance aspects. So like I have this car, if you've been following, it's stage two. If you haven't, I'll link that video up above. We partnered up with EQT tuning. Um, so this thing moves. I tend to drive it a little faster than you know the average person So I did want something that could heat dissipate and uh, really just you know Say I'm speeding a little too fast and I get caught in a pinch and I need to slow down which I don't recommend to avoid an accident I think these brakes should really prevent that and you know keep me safe um, But if I were to do autocross, I would definitely do drilled and slotted just for that heat dissipation factor but um, yeah, we're gonna drive up here. I'm gonna drop Wes off, and I guess I'm gonna go for maybe like 50 miles an hour on this road. Gonna come to a complete stop and see how it feels. Yeah, there might be a little bit of a, a squealing noise because there is a break-in period for these these pads, but um, so just don't take that into a, you know any throw off of not wanting to buy these brakes. But I'm gonna drop Wes off here, turn around, and we'll do a little stop test. Good, dude. It stopped really good, like yeah. bites so quick. I'll do one more, but uh, right. want to get a little sound clip. This yeah, is yeah. my exhaust setup.
stops on a dime, eh? She bites perfectly. Yeah. Oh, I'm so I'm so excited to actually just like whip this thing and if, be yeah. careful always. But <laughs> definitely, they bite. Like I'm just gonna keep reiterating myself. There's really no other way to describe these brakes other than they stop on a dime. But you could smell them kind of just breaking in a little bit. I'm super stoked. So if you want to hop back in. All right, so that's pretty much gonna wrap up this video. We hope you enjoyed. This is a super easy tutorial with some really good perks, you know, to the um, brakes and everything like that. So definitely give us a thumbs up, comment, like, and subscribe. And also comment down below if you wanna see this, like take it to a drag strip, because we do have, you know, a lot of horsepower in this thing, or even like an autocross. Now that I have the brakes set for the autocross, of course my next mod, which is gonna really change the aesthetic appeal, but also the performance end of it. It really can handle corners, hint, hint. Um, but if you wanna see this car go to an autocross or something like that, comment down below. We never really thought to do that because we never really got into that. But if you guys wanna see it, we're obviously gonna try and provide the best content possible. So let us know. But until next time, we're out, peace.